Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to conduct a t-test, both a paired t-test and independent samples t-test in Excel software. Um, I'm using Microsoft 365, so that's the version I have here, so yours might look a little bit different. But when we get into it, it's, it's going to, that process is going to be similar for older form, um, versions of, of Excel. Now, you can just do it directly. You can type in equals t-test and just um, directly do it here. But all you're going to get out if you do that is a p-value. There's some other functions so that then you can take that p-value and use this inverse t option to, to go back and get the actual t-test statistic. You'd have to figure out the degrees of freedom yourself doing that. So I'm going to show you another way to do it that gives you a little more complete output. In order to do that, we need to do um, to put an add-in into Excel. So if you go to File, click on File, and then go all the way down to Options at the bottom. Once you've clicked on Options, you should have this window pop up. Come down to where it says Add-ins. Okay. So what you're going to want is this Analysis Tool Pack. Just click on it. Okay. Analysis Tool Pack. Find it there at the top. Once you've done that, click on Go. Then you're going to check these two right here. Um, just to give you all the statistical options that can be added in. Um, we won't be using everything today. So click those and click on OK. Mine already clicked, but you may need to check those. Click on OK. And that's all there is to it. When you're done, if you've done it correctly, under your Data tab, you should see on the far right this Data Analysis option now. So that's a new thing that should have been added in. You don't need to restart Excel or anything. It just pops up there. So that's where we'll find the tools to do the most of the statistical procedures that you can do here in Excel. Let's go ahead and click on it. When you click on it, you're going to see this open, and you'll see here the various options for statistical um, functions that you can do that are a little better than just the simple functions built into Excel already. So coming down to t-test, we have these various options. t-test for um, a paired t-test. Again, I'm not going to discuss theory, but briefly, that's most often when you have two measurements on the same person that you're comparing, two people that you're comparing, like sets of twins or married couples, something like that, okay? Or it might be a, a before and after on the same person, but two measures on the same person are quite common. Um, T-test is the two, two independent samples. So I have maybe a group of males, a group of females, they don't match up in any way, and I'm going to compare means on something assuming that the two groups have equal variance for whatever score or outcome variable you're using. And then I have a t-test assuming unequal variances, um, assuming they're not. Okay, and there, there is a test in here to test whether actually the variances are equal. I'll show that to you quickly as well. Let's start off with the paired t-test. Just click on that one, click OK. Now, if you're following along, again, my this, this data set is in the notes to this video is a link to it, so you can download it and follow along. Then what you're going to do is you're going to simply put in the values that you want. Okay, first thing. So I'm doing a paired t-test. Right now, this particular data set, what I have is um, 20 Likert type scale questions, um, another score, and a sum of these 20, and, and this is fictional data, essentially. So let's say that um, now that I'm going to pre, um, treat these scale 1 and scale 2 as if they're interval ratio, which you can do in some situations, and I want to compare the means of these two responses, okay? What I'm really doing with paired data is it's as if I found a new column here in Excel where I found differences between the two values, 1 minus 3. 4 minus 2, 1 minus 4, 5 minus 4, I found a new column of those differences, and then I did a t-test to see whether the mean of those differences is 0 or whether there's statistical evidence that the mean is not 0. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. Now you can just type the values in um, the range in here by saying like a2 colon a whatever the last is, or you can just um, highlight what you want like this, click and drag all the way down to the end. I've got 118 rows. When you lift off, it should pop up here. Then make sure you click um, right in the spot you want for the next set of values. I'm going to scroll up, click here, 
I'm going to drag all the way down and lift up and you'll see that those values are there. Now the hypothesized mean difference in this case would be zero. That would be that I, I assume that this mean, really in this case, the mean of all the differences here is zero. Okay, that's my alpha. I can, I can put that in there. And then I tell it where I want it to go. I can either click on this to give it a cell to start the, the output in there. It's a little table of data. Um, you want to give it where the upper left hand corner that data is going to uh, that's going to be but i found it's easiest often to just have it given a new worksheet I'm not gonna i don't need to put anything in there if i don't want to i can leave that blank and or of course i can do a whole new workbook if i want i'm just going to do the new worksheet click ok and you'll see it created a new sheet here and um, it popped me over there and it gives me my full results. So I just need to now adjust the columns so that I can see what's going on here with these variables. Okay, so for my two variables, it's giving me the mean for each of those, the variance for each of those, number of observations in each case, the correlation, which isn't really, that's totally different than finding a mean. It's not what I asked for, but it, but it is there. They hypothesize mean difference. Um, the degrees of freedom. Here is my t-test statistic and then it gives me um, a p-value for a one-tailed test okay and a critical value that the, the value this t-statistic would have had to reach in order for it to be statistically significant and then it gives me the p-value for the two-tailed test and the critical and the value that this that the T um, would have had to um, reach. Okay, there's the T up here. The T, that T would have had to reach for statistical significant for a two-tailed test. So it gives me all that information. What if I'm doing a two-tailed test, probably all I want is this um, T statistic here, the P value for the two-tailed test. Of course, I want the degrees of freedom as well. I may want to report some of the other things, but it's quite complete the output that it gives you. Okay, so that's that's my paired sam my paired t test. Let's go back to the first sheet. I'm going to show you how to do an independent samples t test. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare males to females. Here, I've got a gender column. One is male, two is female, and I'm going to compare those for this sum scale, which is the sum of these these twenty here. So I'm going to do that comparison for male versus female. Well, in order to do this most easily, what I need to do is I need to sort my data set based on this grouping variable, my gender variable. To do that, if I click on this corner here, everything's um, selected. Click on Home, and I'm going to go up to the Sort option, click on Custom Sort. And I'm going to tell it my data as headers because it does. The first row is just um, description variable names. And then I'm going to come on down. And I want to sort according to gender, smallest to largest, so the ones first. So all I need to do, click OK. Everything my data is sorted now according to gender. So if you look at um, column V, the gender column here, as I scroll down, you see I have group one ends here, and then, then group two, the males start here. The very end, I have a missing value where the gender wasn't reported. Now, this is necessary when your data is formatted this way, where you have a um, all-in-one column, the scores that you care about for both groups, and then you have another variable that indicates which group they belong to, in this case, male versus female. You don't need to do this sorting if I had two columns and one column was all the males in it, another column had the, you know, the male scores, another column had all the female scores in it. And again, we're assuming those, those aren't paired in any way. They just happen to be put in two separate columns like that. And the columns could be different length with this particular case. But um, most often you'll see data set up this way. So, so this is the way I'm, I'm doing it through this example. <clears throat> now, in order to, to do this t-test, I'm going to click on data data analysis, scroll down a little bit. I want t-test two samples, that's an, uh, implying independent samples with equal variances, meaning I'm making the assumption that the variance among these, these scores here are the same as for the females or, or for the males for the females. So click OK. 
And then I just have to, again, put the values in here. And so what I'm going to do is just click there. I'm going to come to the sum scale here, and I'm going to look at column V for gender. Look for when that changes from 1 to 2, because I only want the 1s to be included at this time. There we go. So right here, those, those rows are the ones that I want. Okay. Now I click on here again, and this time I want to start with those who are two. So I'm going to come over here, select these values. Now you see that, again, these are all in one column, and I've just set, you know, told it which values go to which group. I could have had those be in totally separate columns and it would have worked. Hypothesize value, which is zero, that, that's probably a default anyway. The alpha you're going to use, and again, I'm going to let this go, output go to a new worksheet. Click OK. Automatically a new worksheet is created with the, this information. I can change my column width so I can really see what is here. And, and then I can cool this up, I mean clean this up as I need to. I've got the means for the males versus the females. There are two variants. As you see, those are different. We didn't do a statistical test at this point to see if there's statistical evidence those are different. We just assumed that the true, these sample variances are different. We, we're making the assumption that the true population variances are the same for the males and females by running the test this way. It tells me how many observations, the pooled variance, which is used in the test. So, um, and degrees of freedom. So here's my t-statistic. So that's one of the key things here. You can see that's quite small, quite close to zero. And then I've got these different, either the critical values, if that's what you're going to use, or the p-values for a one versus a two-tailed test. So again, let's assume I want doing a two-tailed test. That's my p-value I can pull out right there. So I get quite a bit of information doing it um, using using this form this function in in um, Excel. Let's go back to the first sheet. Now it has the option as well for let's go click on on this a two sample assuming unequal variances. Okay, so let's say that I've done a statistical test and so forth to find out whether or not my variances are equal or unequal, unequal in the population for the males versus the females. Okay, I'll show how to do that in a minute, but let's assume we did it and we found that the variances are actually unequal. So then I'll make this choice, click on OK, otherwise everything's the same. I need my data sorted just like I, I did in the first case. I'm going to come up here, I'm going to click on these for the uh, males by looking at this column V, okay, and then I'm going to do the same for the females, okay, and I hope I stopped at 117 the last time I should have because we don't know those are actually, that last one's actually a female. If I didn't, that was a mistake. And again, I can just put it in a new worksheet, hit OK, and you know, make my columns a little bigger if I need to, so if I want to see a little more, okay, I can see it. I've got my two means and so forth, so I have degrees of freedom. I have the T-test statistic for this case for the assumption of unequal variances, which should be a Welch test. And then I can either, you know, I choose whether it's one-tailed or two-tailed, whether I'm looking at p-values, which is what most people do these days, or the critical value approach. Let's say I did a p-value for a two-sample T-test, 0.53. Okay, so that runs through that. Um, quickly. Now, just to show you um, quickly, let me go back to the first sheet. If you don't know whether you have equal and unequal variances, you can perform the statistical test for it here as well. What you would do is you'd come up and find in this data analysis the F test to sample for variances. And then this is going to be very similar. And you see, and it actually should have been 117, so I may have done that incorrectly when I did the a test before. So I'm going to look at, um, it, it pops it in there, it assumes I'm going to do the same thing, um, the same data. If not, you put it in there yourself. Oh, actually, no, that's not what happened here. You have to forgive me my mistake. This, um, I need to actually, that was from some prior work I was doing. I need to actually put it in here. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll up, take the values for the first group, which Looking at column V for the males ends here. And then the second group starts here. 
and I'll in there at 117. And again, I can, I'll just have it put in a new worksheet. And I have my F test. So what this done is this is, this is a test that looks at comparison, you know, the, the two variances for the two groups shows the two variances. Here's my p-value 0.12. So not statistically significant, which means there isn't really statistical evidence that the, that the standard deviations or variances are different between the two groups. So I could just use that student's t-test as opposed to the alternative, which is technically a, a well-test test. So that's something to just be aware of that that option is also built in here. So you can really do what you, you need to with t-tests. Of course, you can do, um, <clears throat> Go back to the first the first group can you do a one sample t test well to do that you would just simply come down here and look at your various options you see that it gives you the two tests sample with equal two sample for unequal and then a z test which is with you know known variances it doesn't give you the option um, to do it that to do that you'd have to use if you had um, one group only and you were doing a test of a mean you would have to use the built-in functions so for example here I would use the t-test function that's built in the first thing it um, I'm actually that no that's not the function I'm gonna have to, that I'm gonna use here I'm gonna have to use the actual t distribution functions here which are a little bit more complicated I'm not going to go through that in this particular video I just wanted to make you aware it does exist where you'll have to do some of the calculations that are a little more a little more complicated um, as far as figuring that out if you needed to look at a one sample test but that's something that's rarely done